doing it. You got you supposed to be happy you sitting there with Kid L. Why you mad? The Kid L podcast. Are we rolling, man? First of all, what the hell are those, man? Are those cracks? Those cracks, man. What? Come on. My little ghetto chill, look. Man, I ain't want to throw nothing on, man. Are you, comparison, man. Who's got who's whose shoes are more fire or feeding more? What y'all think, man? They both the same, you know. But they nah. different. They different. What's that? I think you got me. Uh, these are these are tribes. Chief tribe, man. Yeah. Okay, then. I, I'm about to run out. If anything goes wrong with your phone, and I mean anything, whether it cracks, breaks, or you need something replaced, go to I. Fix Detroit. They are a phone repair store. They also offer prepaid services. Not only do they offer repairs, but they are a fully equipped electronic store. They offer prepaid plans and they are a bill payment center. You can get to iFix Detroit Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. They're located at 16401 East Warren Avenue, Detroit, Michigan. iFix Detroit for all your phone repair services and more. Stepping in them up. But you know what? Your socks are Hold up Because my socks are heat too though Mine say uh, You knock my socks off Yours is uh, how, high. how high the movie yeah, We high already We even got high Yeah you guys we Get yeah. higher though Yeah no cap <laughs> uh, Boom's in the building man God damn it, God What's God happening with you man? Up. What's been new? What's been going on? Shit working on some new projects I got a new mixtape coming out I say The beginning of May The end of this month Got a new mixtape coming out Called Boom Talk. I ain't gonna say nothing too major. Okay, shit. How many podcasts have you done, man? One. Well, who was it? Hip Hop Lab. Okay, so, okay, yeah, man. Because I, I did look up, I was like, let me see some of your interviews and shit like that. Mm-hmm. I only did one. It's a kind of exclusive like, moment that's happening right now. It's kind of like mm-hmm. rare. What makes really you really don't do these like that, but. What know. What's, uh, is it like a decision thing or is it just like what makes you not want to hop on the interviews and promote like that? I really just be in my own little world, my own little bag, so I really don't be into interviews, too much questions. I just like doing my music videos, shit like that. But I'm starting to open up more, so that's why I be connecting, trying to. You got to look at it, bro. Reach like, out. Even like, all right, Tupac's right there, right? Even he had to do interviews, and I'm like, who knows if he really liked to do them. That's why I said, as I'm opening up more and building with the music, I'm starting to realize more like, yeah, I got to network and. Do certain stuff Because so as an right. artist You just want to be an artist Right mm-hmm. It's like you don't really Want to focus on anything That takes away from the music No Not really Like I really don't Care to like Build like With certain people But Say like If I'm building with somebody It gotta be like I cannot put it It gotta make sense Like you just won't see me Just doing interviews With just any old body Like you gotta Have something going on For yourself Like yeah. basically yeah. Like with you, like that's why I came. I let you today. That's what I was talking to Big Face Barry. He was he he made a post saying like he hates how um, artists are promoting artists from out of state before they promote artists in Detroit mm-hmm. first. And then I responded to his post by saying, "Well, I'm tired of artists going outside of Detroit doing outside podcasts instead of doing podcasts in Detroit. Like a lot of people are going, a lot of people from Detroit are going to No Jumper first. They're going to Vlad first. They're going to Auntie's house first. And I respect all those platforms, but bro, you should be tapping in with the city first and exactly. building the city's but platforms. But some people do tap in with them, but some people just don't tap back. You know how that should be. His argument was like, we're not doing enough as far as media is concerned for people to tap in here first. Like right. you're gonna get more views if you go do a no jumper interview versus if you come here. But, but that's the point of building the culture and exactly. the city up is like mm-hmm. starting here and stuff. Exactly, like that. that's how I feel. If you mess with me, then I mess with you. I'm just not going. Basically, like if I hit you up and you don't hit me back up, then you try to hit me up later. I'm not gonna fuck with it. But basically, like how I hit you up and you hit me back up, I can fuck with it because. We could build on the same time. Like yeah. it's just like you ain't brush me off or just give me no weird vibe. Exactly. A lot of people give me weird vibes and I just instantly turn it down after that. Yeah, I feel that. Uh, talk about baby boom, man. Uh where were you born? Detroit, Michigan, mm-hmm. West Side. Mm-hmm. I say over in Grand River area, like Plymouth Schoolcraft, a little bit of all them areas. Uh how much did uh growing up in Detroit impact your music? A lot. Like my whole Childhood history was just like involved in the street, so it's just like I got my name really off the street. So when I started rapping, they already knew who I was due to my street activities. Right. So you had a reputation before you got into music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was like the first times you were heading into a studio like? 
The first time I've been to a studio, it was like in the basement studio, like some bullshit studio, not a good quality, but everybody still fucked with my music. Like the first song I made in the studio basement, my bro, he was recording and he was rapping first, but he like, fuck you, do a song. So when I did the song, it was kind of hard, but I wasn't fucking with it. But he like, man, everybody else fucking with it because he uploaded it on SoundCloud. But I'm on some still doing my street activities. I ain't fucking with it for real. But long story short, like me and my dog, big homie, who I was just telling you about, he in custody right now. He ended up was recording shit. So we ended up getting to a studio together and I ended up doing the song for real, like in a real studio. So long story short, when I did the song and shit, everybody was fucking with it. I was kind of fucking with it, but I ended up getting locked up on some street activities bullshit. So I ended up getting locked up for a year, but when I came home, I ended up doing a video to another song, and I ended up brushing that song off. But the video I did to the song Who They Waiting For, that bitch ended up going crazy out the blue. Like, I wouldn't even... Putting the shit together, just pulled up, called a couple people's the cameraman, pulled up, shot the video, and that bitch went crazy out the blue. Like, yeah, we just That's, started putting t- shit together since then. Like, you know, some, I did notice <laughs> the interesting part about the the Rio track is usually it's the artist's name and then featuring Rio, but on yours is literally you're featuring on his song. With Rio, yeah, Rio the OG, yeah, yeah. That was on one of my mixtape. That's because my guy Jock put that together for me on some oh, shit. Okay, cool. Yeah. So was it like a pre made was it like a pre made verse or something? Say like me and Jock put our verses on there, he sit to the Rio, he ended up hopping on there. Yeah, that that, that thing like a hundred almost over a hundred thousand views, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but it still went crazy though. Yeah, man. What do you what do you consider like success as far as how much you put into a song and a video and then like a return on the views and engagement? Like, do you look at the numbers or anything like that? Like this much makes enough sense for me? Yeah, say like when I drop a video and the views and stuff like that. Yeah. I do, but I don't. Because every time I drop, I just look at it for a certain amount of time and it just go up at my pace. Now, I don't even pay attention to it. I just drop videos and it just go. You're not even paying attention <laughs> anymore specifically. Like, let me see how this one did now. Yeah, say like the one I just dropped, I pay attention to it. But not like most of the videos I drop, I don't pay attention to it. Yeah. I just promote it for like a couple of days and just... Leave it at that. Do you have a manager? Do you have management? Yeah, I got management. Do, do they kind of, like, persuade you to do that? Or, like, do your own thing with that? Or, like, are they trying to tell you to market shit? They do their marketing on their own, but I do my shit on my own as well. Uh, so. So you, okay, so, yeah, you got it set up for yourself, then. You don't mm-hmm. have to, like, spread yeah, it out I yourself. I really just do as I do on my own. For See, real, man, but a lot of people They still are got it set up for me right though. Yeah, a lot of people are jealous of that. A lot of artists are like, damn, I wish somebody could do all that other shit that I don't want to mm-hmm. do. But that's that's my part of my music career too. Like I don't want to be controlled or I like to move at my own pace as well. Like so my me and my managers, we got that understood as well too. Like Yeah. So when you're kind of brushing songs off, you're getting in and you're kind of, you get out of jail, you're brushing songs off, like you're just kind of moving as you go. See, but I only did one song before I went to jail. Mm. So and I only brushed that song off. And then I had came home and did who they waiting for. So as I did that song and it went crazy, then I got the taken off with the music career for real. So that one song that I brushed it off, I just brought that out recently on my mixtape called Different Breed Vibe 2. It's called All Bullshit. Now, how do you know you're seeing... What do you know success is at that time as an artist? Like, what made you feel like you're seeing something? When I... when it, Basically, when I created something, like, my... When I created my own brand, like, created my own name, and everybody was just rocking with it, and I just got to seeing people trying to ride my wave, just steal certain little ideas I'm coming up with, and just basically following everything I'm doing... I just got the really opening up, like, yeah. What was the first things you were seeing people steal or kind of rip off? Basically, I came up with something called Don't Worry About It with the thumbs down and stuff like that. Me and my bro, big homie, we came up with that. So then everybody was just going crazy over it, just don't worry about it, the whole city, west to east. That's all you hear, don't worry about it, thumbs down, everybody doing it. And you feel like that was something you originated and people were taking? Yep. Um, I can stand on that. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, no. Nah. Uh, talk about like that was in a video or something. Yep, my first video. Who they waiting for? Yeah, and then when they seen that, we started doing this. Mm-hmm. It, can, it can happen like that. So after you started seeing people kind of take you know bite styles and kind of replicating what you're doing, or even just doing something you do normally, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you decide to progress the career after that? Like, what moves were you making? Um, just basically coming up with more like 
more ways that people to follow up with. Just, I don't know, just coming up with more little ideas, like sayings and stuff like that, like yop yop, and just trying to put stuff together to have people still follow and suit with me. Yeah, you have a track with All Star JR too, right? Mm, nope, not yet, but we working on one. How though. do you not have a song with JR? I've seen it, man. We bro, working I, on it. You know how shit be the streets. Bro, if I pull it be a lot of YouTube shit. right now. I guarantee you, I'm gonna see a future. You with probably hear a beat or something, but oh. it ain't no bad blood or nothing. You feel me? Just be street shit, be getting a lot of shit, and he be having shit going on. So do I. But we chopped it up by the song though. We about so to get some shit going. So if I pull up YouTube right now, I'm not gonna see a future. Nah, nah with Hold up, man, because I know my stuff. <laughs> he said no to three things already, and I know for a fact that are true. So hold on, just give me a second. I ain't got no song with Jay. Nah, no, nah. No. Okay, hold up, man. Give me two minutes. Say, I'd be high, but hell no. Nah. We got time. Yeah, we got no got song. Time. HBK Boom featuring All Star Jr. Can't be stopped. One year ago. Play it. Bro, it literally says, is your name HBK Boom? No, hell no. Ghetto Baby Boom. Oh, my God, bro. I'm talking See, to Ghetto Baby Boom that's what I'm Boom saying. See? You, you What's threw going off. On? I, knew, I knew this oh shit was confused. You oh said my. Baby Boom, but I thought you knew Ghetto oh Baby my Boom. Man, this is the most yeah, fucked up man. interview of all time already. Yeah, but we're we going to get it right, though. Shit. Oh, we getting shit. Help. You know what's going on. Hold up. Hold the ghetto up, is nigga in America. You hey, thought this nah, was HBK? Bro, this is Ghetto. Man, now I know why this whole conversation is confusing this whole time. Yeah, like you don't see what's going on. Oh, now I'm getting offended. Now no, you better get wait, hold up, bro. <laughs> now, yes, man. Wait, now this is actually legendary. This is a, no yeah, offense. Like I didn't tell you, I don't do this it. shit a lot, man. But oh you, we goodness. here though. I thought you knew what was going on. Oh my goodness, man. No, ghetto baby boom is in the fucking. Yeah. My fault, man. This is now I'm actually now. excited about this. <laughs> God damn it. Shit, my, let's reset. My mm-hmm. fault. You all know, right. it's all love, though, yeah, bro. Yeah, that's, that's just a misunderstanding. Yeah, that's crazy as fuck. My fault, y'all. That's why. Um. Shit. Well, let's continue from that point, though. Let's just walk you through your story a little bit more. Talk about, um, you know, you're walking through, you're getting reciprocation, you're seeing people take the style and whatnot, mm-hmm. and how you're progressing your career from that point. Because I le- I think a lot of people don't get that stamp where, you know, a lot of people try to create trends, and that mm-hmm. shit either catches on or it doesn't catch on. Exactly. But you probably weren't trying to do it intentionally. You were probably just doing it off of something that you exactly. normally do. Exactly, and then it caught on. So for, from that point on, it just had me trying to put more ideas of what can I do to get people to attract more to do what I'm doing, basically. Like, what can I do to get them to follow up with what I'm doing? Because I'm already in the streets. They know that part and all that, but I'm talking about as far as music career. Like, what can I do in videos, and what can I come up with? So I came up with, like, my own little brand. Like, basically, this right here, this is my logo right here. Well, <clears throat> so far, how far you've gotten and everything like that, um, what's been so far the hardest part about getting through the music career especially in Detroit Mm. just basically like building with basically like artists that's popular from Detroit because I really don't um, get along with a lot of people and they read me wrong say like they'll read me as a bad guy when they really don't know me like certain people don't know me but how I rap they look at me like, no, nah, he not no. I don't know. I really don't know him like that. He look janky. They get to trying to read me off the wrong thing. Like they gotta get to know me first. So, but people read me f read me off wrong. I just don't get into it with them. I just don't build with people. Yeah, I feel that man. There's a lot of like uh, unknowns when you're dealing with somebody. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, who's been the biggest motivating factors around you? Mm, I say. L.O. and Rudy as in the rap career. I fuck with him heavy. Because he, like, genuinely, and, like, when we kick it, like, I feel it and all that as far as, like, rappers. Yeah. Those people who have been so long involved in the game always have, like, the most information for you. And the people who don't hold back the sauce. Mm-hmm. And Baby Tron, he genuine, too. I fuck with him. He fuck with me heavy, too. For real? Mm-hmm. Baby Tron is uh, him and the, I think Baby Money are the most talked about and explosive artists mm-hmm. in Detroit. And then that's what make it kind of weird too for baby trying to fuck with me and try to get to know me on the genuine side. And I got rappers that I knew like from the streets, like I knew personally, but they be still kind of nervous on fucking with me on just certain occasions. But that's why I be threw off with a lot of shit. I ain't gonna lie. That's why I stay in my lane and just do my music how I do it. 
Yeah, it would just be too much bullshit. You can't read people, so I'd just be like, I don't know. But when you're stuck in the zone in a studio and you know that's all you have to do is go inside, make music, and somebody else manage it, it probably takes a lot of stress off, bro. A lot of people don't have that luxury. Mm-hmm. You know, they have to be a part of a lot of stuff that they don't want to be a part of, bro. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Uh, when you look at yourself on the placement um, in Detroit right now, do you think you've gotten enough of the recognition you deserve at the point at this point? I do, but I don't. Cause I do, but I don't. Cause it's still some people that don't know who I am in the city. So, mm, nah, I don't think I got enough recognition. That's why I still go how I go in the city. Still be popping up in little certain occasions. Still trying to let them know who I am. Cause a lot of people don't know who I am in the city still. Yeah, man. I'm looking at it like uh, another wave, like I told people the other day, like another wave is coming for Detroit. Uh, the artists that are succeeding right now will succeed by 2025. I think it's going to be the hardest next couple of years for artists because everybody who already established a fan base, this is either the end of their wave or some people who are in the middle ground are still taking over. Right. And but then, then, let me go back on that. I can't even say that because some people act like they don't know who I am but really know who I am. I got two videos that did a million views with really no promotion, like less than a year. So they probably do know who I am. They just probably try to act like they don't know who I am. Cause like I say, they probably look at me like a bad guy. I don't know. <laughs> but shit, you could just be looking at it though. like that though too, bro. You don't know. Maybe your perception Man, is just I, up. Right. You right. You right. What yeah. I'm saying. People mm-hmm. are always looking at, oh, dog, I'm about to go say what up to him. But you might be thinking like, this dude's looking at me crazy. You never fucking know, bro. Yeah. How what do you do on your what do you do to kind of uh, balance yourself out as an artist where you're not paying attention to music? Uh, I say get high <laughs> and shit, get high and read shit like look up history shit. Would you say like Tupac? I just look at movies and shit like that, documentaries, uh, stuff like that. None really, just get high for. Real. <laughs> You smoke weed and watch Tupac documentaries all day? Mm-hmm. No, That's... not Tupac. I'm just saying, like, documentaries, like, oh, history stuff. That's what I just do. Yeah. Yeah, Tupac and Biggie's movie came out. A lot of people don't know, man. There's a movie with Tupac about Tupac and Biggie, and it literally has fucking uh, Johnny Depp is, like, the main character in the fucking movie. Okay. Do you ever I ain't see hipped movie? up on that. No, it's called man. City of Lies, man. It's the true story of who killed Tupac and Biggie. And literally, Johnny Depp is the fucking detective. Detective Poole, who investigates the murder of Tupac and Biggie. Oh, so the detective killed Tupac? No, man. <laughs> the detective, <laughs> the detective, his name was Poole. He was investigating Tupac and Biggie's murders. Oh, okay, okay. And it's a true story. In real life, they figured out that the reason that Tupac and Biggie's murders were covered up is because somebody in the L.A. Police Department was connected to the murder of Tupac and Biggie. So they did everything to cover it up because if they didn't, there would be like a huge lawsuit against the city mm-hmm. and New York as well, too. Inside job. Yeah, so they covered up the... It wasn't like they planned to kill him, but there was a connection. So they covered up the whole fucking thing. That's why Biggie's mom is trying to sue New York for like... Or sorry, uh, sue the uh, LA for millions and millions of dollars. Like $200 million or some shit. Mm, for, the death of, for the death of Biggie, bro. Mm. Man. Uh, with your music right now, what's kind of like the biggest focal point for you are you looking to continue the style that you have right now or are you going to kind of branch off and try different things i'm kind of branch off i'm gonna branch off because i am about to leave the city and go like try to start over in a new environment i ain't even gonna put it out there on the record yet but is this on the record or not on the record mm, i ain't gonna put it on the record where i'm gonna go to oh but it's gonna be somewhere in texas though but i ain't gonna say like where what city though but I'm gonna go start off out in Texas and. What made you think to do that? Mm, just so I could focus up. I don't know, get my head clear, cause I'd be still just lost in the streets. Like my head be like clouded, trapped up in bullshit. So it kind of be like one foot in the streets, one foot in the music. But I'm trying to pull out the streets, but it'd be like certain shit holding me back. So I feel like if I go to Texas, I could branch off and focus more and open up more doors and, you know, just. Open up my mind a little more. That's kind of smart. When are you mm-hmm. gonna do that? I say by before August. Damn. I made myself a promise before August. Mm-hmm. Damn. So you're just gonna peace out? Yeah, I wasn't gonna say nothing, but fuck it. I'm gonna just put it on the record. I 
I'm gonna leave for sure. Though. Are you still gonna be making Detroit style music, or are you gonna just yeah, see what the fuck yeah. happens? No, like... I ain't gonna just do no shit like that. Hell no, I'm still. I'm gonna just switch it up a little bit. Like yeah. I said, I'm just switch it up. Well, some people go like Britain and shit. It. Like I know Future went out to fucking like the UK for a while for whatever. Like start doing like auto tune a little bit, just doing a little different shit. You know. Yeah. That could be like the the accelerator or the decline where people take risks, man. Right. I been taking risk all my life, shit. You, you gone, shit. You gotta learn. You live and learn, shit. <laughs> yeah. Texas is popping too. Texas has like the biggest podcast right now, which is Joe Rogan podcast. Mm-hmm. I heard that too. They have a, their comedy too. scene's going crazy. They have a little bit of a music music scene. A lot of people from Texas are tapped into Detroit, which is really fucking weird. Mm-hmm. Kinda, like, like, I got a lot of people fuck with me from Miami. Bro. Like that's one of the states they tapped in with me heavy at in Miami. How do you see the gauge of that? How do you figure out people in Miami are fucking with you? Because they be tapping in. Like, I ain't going to lie. They just be tapping in. I be tapping in with them. Yeah. This motherfucker's mad at me, son. And you have every right to be mad at me. I ain't mad at you. I'm just hot. I ain't going to nah, lie. No, man, you're mad. I understand <laughs> it. Look, look, it was a misunderstanding. I I'm hit. Like, no, I you know, know that. I'm, I'm just hot. I ain't yeah. mad at you for sure. All right, yeah. Because now I'm mad. I'm mad at myself. I'm mad at myself for not confused. reading. You were just confused. I was That's confu- all it was. Yeah. Motherfuckers was confused. <laughs> Motherfuckers. I didn't even know it was nobody's name, HBK <laughs> Boom, though. No, but here's the funny part. I know who ghetto, I know you. That's right, the I'm thing here. that's funny. I didn't know that motherfucker. <laughs> who I, is that? I don't fucking know. I'm not putting any of this in there, by the way. This is just between us. Right, I'm just saying, I knew who I you were. Once I realized who you were, because I never really look at your face, I just know motherfucking ghetto people. Mm-hmm. Is. But. It would. I'm the ghettoest thing in America. I ain't gonna lie. It would. Uh, the, well, let's, t- let's talk about some of the uh, the features and collaborations you have worked with, since you are kind of specific about the artists that you work with. Man. Uh, I had some features with, i say, one of the artists is NFL 2 Wap, who Kodak signed. He just signed recently. Mm. NFL 2 Wap. My dog from Miami, D30. Mm, I just got a future in with Baby Tron. Shit, you know... You know, my mutual homies, YBN, Lil Bro, GMO Stacks, shit. Oh, Babyface yeah. Ray, I got a special guest on some shit. I got that in the vault. Damn. I ain't gonna bring that out just yet, though. I got him on some hard shit. I think it's kind of crazy to get a Baby Tron feature right now, bro. I think, like, people are not gonna know the value of that for, like, another year. Mm-hmm. I bet you by next year having a Baby Tron feature, like, all right, like three years from now, it's gonna be like if you had a future from Eminem like in two thousand, uh, like nineteen ninety nine or like two thousand. Mm-hmm. Like what the fuck? That's a different breed of shit though. Yeah. People That's under, you know. yeah, people are undervaluing a lot of the artists that are gonna like be next up in the next couple of years, producers mm-hmm. and all too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're not looking at the value of what somebody could become. They're kind of looking at like what are you at right now? Exactly. That's why I say where I'm at right now, I'm still living and learning. Like, I really, I just be going on day by day with this shit. Like, just learning piece by piece. Yeah. <laughs> for real. What's been um, the most annoying parts about being an artist for you? Is trying to elevate and you got a lot of people trying to bring you down, I guess. I don't know. Well, just bring you in, like, bad situations and you know where you're trying to go, basically. So that's why I say, at some point of time, you gotta branch off and just separate. When you're trying to be a good artist and a big artist, you gotta separate. Yeah, that's what you were kind of saying earlier. One foot in is like with the streets, but then one foot's in with the music. Mm-hmm. And you're trying to find a way to tie it together. Exactly. But sometimes you can't tie it together, so you gotta just figure out how you going <laughs> no you gotta figure the shit out <laughs> that's why that's why when people talk about these NBA players and stuff like that and they're caught up in the streets and stuff like that I'm like bro you don't know this motherfucker's life yeah cause just it's cause... a difference like caught up in the streets cause some people can just be in the streets like just bullshitting around but some people can really have like real shit going on in the streets so it'd be kind of different with people say in the streets because you never know like how deep a person is in the streets or you feel me like it'd be different with this shit though 
Yeah, like we don't. Nobody knows like fucking John Moran's situation, man. Nobody mm-hmm. knows like how deep or whatever situation he's really tied into that keeps him going back and forth. Exactly. Yeah, you ain't with him every day, day by day, every hour. So yeah. you would never know for real, like. Because we've been around artists that are major, 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 but we know where they came from. Mm-hmm. And I know that person, and I know he loves his family and friends, and I know that his history doesn't allow him to just get to the top without any problems or exactly. anything occurring. Mm-hmm. They've been through shit that we'll never get. And the people were like, oh, yeah, why why was Takeoff there? Why was Migos in that situation? Why are you guys shooting dice? Why are you guys doing that? You don't fucking know, man. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, that might be that old motherfucker's only moment of feeling f- like himself again. And he's just in a situation where he feels like himself because that's what he grew up with. Exactly. And then people criticize, like, artists who, who made it and why they're still where they are. Like, mm-hmm. that shit. You just can't take it out of them or you can't talk it out of them either. That shit. You know what blows my mind, bro, is, like, artists that get rich as fuck or, like, anybody who gets rich as fuck and blows away all their money. Mm-hmm. Like, even Mike Tyson, bro, this motherfucker has hundreds of millions of dollars, son. You know what I'm saying? And then you yeah, break it down like, to, like, one million after, like, 20 years. How the fuck did that happen, bro? I've had I've had people on here that were millionaires at one point, and now they're broke. I still don't get it. I'm like, what the fuck? Where did... How? Mm, not living and learning. That's why I'm happy. I just didn't get brunched off with a bunch of money first. I just got to sit back and just, I don't know. You just got to live and learn. People just don't be having, mm-mm. Are you good with money management? What you mean? Like, you know how to manage your money or do you do you blow it I'm on? I'm learning. So I'm you... not going to lie to you say I do. I'm learning. So you a blow your bit. money on, on, on random shit too? Yeah. <laughs> I can't even sit here and lie to you, yeah. But I'm learning. Like, I'm learning. I'm learning. I ain't going to say too much. I'm learning. <laughs> right. Especially if you get it doing what you love. That's the easiest money to blow. Right. Mm-hmm. If you become a rapper and you just start seeing those YouTube checks, like five grand a month or whatever, 10 grand a month. Mm-hmm. I was just like, bitch, that's 10 grand right there. I could just do three, four on that and I'll keep the rest. Exactly. Ready. That's why you got to learn, though. Cause it's a lot of times you just gonna blow the money. Then who gonna help you when the money gone? Yeah, you're gonna be looking stupid. Do you let people borrow money from you? If I could borrow it from them, it gotta make sense. That's the type of person I am. It gotta make sense. If I ain't borrow nothing from you, why you gonna borrow something from me? <laughs> yeah. And no one who needs it and who doesn't really need it. Exactly. Unless you really need it and I know you like a genuine person, then I'll do it. But other than that, uh, Even, like, features for friends, right? Your friends probably hit you up for features. Like, bro, you, you're successful as fuck. Like, let me get on. Like, put me on. Do something for me. Uh, I really ain't into that either. Uh, right? Putting your boy on. Because that's not helping me. Like, I could see if I was in a position to do that, then I'd do it. But if you just see me elevate and you just want a future from me for some clout, then nah, I'm straight. Like, if it ain't going to help me, then nah, I'm straight. Yeah. That's how I feel about the Twitch shit, too. I feel like when, when people started seeing, like, some rappers Twitch and make a bunch of money and shit, and then they were, like, trying to join the servers and, like, try to do their own thing, and I'm like, bro, that's his bag. Like, that's... He's successful at it because he's good at it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not because you're going to be a part of it or something. Is it going to make you successful? Exactly. People be having the wrong intentions and shit. That's yeah. I mean. Yeah, bro. Uh, talk a little bit about where your music comes from. How does it? How do you come up with your lyrics? How do you come up with the content that you deliver? Mm, just being in the environment that I'm in. Just waking up, seeing different shit. Just, you know, shit. Just be in the environment that I'm in. That's how I come up with my lyrics. That's why I said if I branch off, go see some different shit, maybe I would start rapping different because I'd be living different, I guess. Sounds like a dream, bro. Sounds like that (laughs) dream in, like, Carlito's way when he fucking wanted to... uh... That's literally what he wanted to do. He wanted to fly to a different state. He's like, I'm gone. Once I get this 50 racks, I'm out of here. But see, that's the type of person I is. What I want to do, I'm going to do. So that's why I say... It just got to make shit make sense, live and learn. Because every day I wake up, I'm waking up thinking about what's going to be my next move. How can I elevate my life? Like, what can I do? If you ever see me just stuck thinking, I'm just hot thinking about, like, damn, is this shit going to make sense, make it better for me? Like, 
Mm. Are you able to make a living off of just music right now? Yeah. So you're in a good spot then. Yeah. It's not like you're struggling with like a struggling artist or starving artist in your position. Mm. So now it's like ultimate clarity. You can kind of position yourself wherever you want to position yourself. Yeah. I'm in a good spot with the music. Like my music paid me good. I'm not worried about nothing like that. I'm just worried about elevating and like I say, still being one foot in the streets and one foot in the rap game. Mm. Yeah, bouncing bouncing for a minute, getting clarity and taking time out. Did you so you've been to Texas before, is that why you kinda picked it? Yeah, my nephew stayed in Texas. I visited Texas before. So that's the go to. It wouldn't have been something more tropical or some shit like that. Yeah. Say like my brother, I only got two brothers that my mom ever had. One of my oldest brothers, he's dead and my other brother, he in prison right now. Mm. But my oldest brother, he had a son, he live in Texas right now. So that'd be like my go to, you know, just to Raise him up a little bit down there. Yeah, nah. How many people do you feel like are actually close to you in the music scene? People you can trust or rely on or are connected with you? I say five. I say five. I come on one hand. I know for sure five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can name like for real zero. All right, hold up. So if I can actually count how many people I trust around me in the entertainment scene, and I talk about are in are in it in it. So many people have switched up on me, bro, like at the randomest times. And then they mm -hmm. switch back as if I don't remember that they switched up on me. So I got to say zero, bro. I do. I got to think about even the times where, like, somebody asked me for something in a way where it's like, bro, you know I'm going to lose if I do this with you. Right. Why the fuck are you asking me to do this? And I count those people, too. I count you. I'm, I'm going to count you for trying to put me in a situation that you knew wasn't going to work on my benefit. Mm -hmm. I have to, bro. Look, like, I'm just being honest, man. I, I really don't have anybody in the entertainment industry that I really look at and go like, yeah, bro. For so you don't have no manager? Nah. Mm -hmm. Nah, hell nah. But <laughs> to trust people in the entertainment industry? Like, to fully trust them? Like, bro, for sure, like, this dude would never, never, never? Nah, fuck no. I had one of my friends that told me one time, he said, I'm going to come on your podcast and I'm going to cross-examine you. What do you mean by that? He wanted to, like, investigate who I was, where I'm from, what gives me the credentials to have the background I am. And this is a dude I was promoting and supporting and, and doing everything for with off of love. Nothing, never took nothing from his ass. Came on my podcast and said that shit. I mean, he, he hit me up on a text and said that shit to me. And then I remember, like, I now I know, like, bro, like... I I'm saying what made him say that? You ain't put him in position or something? Because... Like, so. Because uh, a, a very, very major, major rapper in Detroit doesn't like me. I'm not going to say his name, but he's a right. very, very major rapper who really does not like me. And he was affiliated with my friend at that time. Right. Okay. And he told him, like, you shouldn't be around that dude because that dude's not really for the culture. And so he's like, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to get on his podcast and I'm going to interview him and see what I can get from him and see what, the, what he's really So doing. he let somebody else influence him. And I'm like, motherfucker, him. like, bro, you can't do that. You can't sit here and I'm doing all this for you and then you're going to switch and say this and this and this to me. And now I just play it cool with him, even though I, I always feel that way. That means that that's why I can never trust nobody, because if you ever did something to me wrong once, it's never going to sit right with me forever. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't really like building people either, because they hear something from one person, and they go off what they heard from one person and go with it. Like, yeah. This shit be weird. Like, you can't do shit like that. You can't listen to what one person is saying and go off of it. Yeah. Yeah, the rumors are, like, the craziest shit ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Should I go through every day? Just rumors? Rumors. Yeah. Well, who are some of the artists that uh, you kind of look up to a little bit or uh, helped gain a little bit of influence from? Mm, I say Lil Boozy, Gucci Man. Mm. Then my first two, I say off the rip. Young Boy, Lil Dirt. Mm. Damn, you started number one with Lil Boosie though, man. Shit. Yeah. Number one, son. Yeah, that's my. You saying like who I looked up to, like right? Like oh, at I, the time you mean, right? Yeah, like that's what I used to listen to when I was a kid. Like looked up to like music, Gucci Man, oh. Young Jeezy, motherfucking uh, Lil Dirt, Young Boy, shit like that. Were you invested in Detroit music at the time? Yeah, like Peasy, Dope Boy, shit like that. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, whoever that was really hot in the city, I was really listening to him. Like, I, if you sweet, I listen to you. I ain't got no hate in me. I, I really listen to everybody for real. Yeah. I'm on the. I'm going back in time. I've been going back to Doughboys. I've been listening to that a lot. I, the timing of them is like impeccable, and the music is just impeccable, bro. Like they just really were spot on with everything they did. Mm, like nah, I listen to Payroll though. Like, no Payroll, he still got his shit going. I listen to Payroll. Yeah. Um, and this... Rock, Rock. I can't never forget about Rock. Dope boy, Rock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's my dog. Um, with the. With your clothing brand as well, too, man. Talk about that and, like, the artistry behind it and everything. Like, are you making these yourself completely or, like, what's going on with it? Yeah, I'm making it myself right now. Mm. As far as, like... Mm. Repeat your question again. I did just tell you I'm high, so I'm Oh, you're good. The, the clothing brand and everything like that, the artwork and everything. Like, how you're putting it together. And where'd you even get the ability to draw and shit? I didn't draw. It just I came up with this off the um. You heard the Bebe Kids cartoon mm-hmm. back in the day. Oh that's yeah, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back that's in the day, what my yeah. chain off was. So, boom. When I wanted to come up with my logo, they said I couldn't use that because probably get sued doing the Bebe Kids. It's Pee Wee. So I just came up with my own little design with a baby. I had somebody create me a little artwork. And they came up with this. So shit, I just been running with it ever since. And everybody be saying it's sweet, kind of. Uh, kind of look like me on type of crazy shit. You know how you get all type of comments. So I just been running with it, been settling, doing this thing. So with that, why was that? Thing? Were you like watching that like all the time or some shit? Like what was the influence behind that? Yeah, when I was little. So I just wanted to, I don't know. I don't know what made me come up with it. I just was thinking of it one day and just like, nah, I'm going to get a chain like that. Man, nah, it's just funny. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just dope. Shit, what's on your mind, man? What's what are you what are you thinking about? Mm, hi, I don't know. Yeah. Studio. Getting into recording. Mhm. That's all I be doing all day. Getting high, recording. I really don't be having shit else to do. For real. Sounds like cat, bro. My life is just ghetto and boring. Man, man no, it's not, bro. You make know. money, make merch, studio. Think of shit. What's Ghetto Girl? Oh, yeah. I got a new song coming out called Ghetto Girl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're going to get it together. I don't need to be trying to... What they call it? I don't know. I don't be trying to put it out there until it's done, basically. Like, because I ain't finished with it yet. But I got some hard-ass shit called Ghetto Girl coming out. So this is being recorded in segments. What you mean? Like, how do you know... What the song is, if you haven't, you haven't started on it, or you started? Yeah, I started on it, but I just ain't finished it, basically. So in segments, yeah. I mean, it's like you recorded it one day, and then you got a few more days to keep mm-hmm. recording. Mm-hmm. You got to put another verse on there. Yeah. A lot of people are getting songs done. But one. then I'm trying to figure out if I want to put a girl on there, so I really don't know. That's why I really just left it open right now. Do you got anybody in mind? Mm. I say somebody big, like Dave Slow for Cash Dollar. Somebody, look at you. I've seen the picture already. Uh-huh. Maybe you can get it together for me then. I got you. <laughs> yeah, I'll set that up. Mm-hmm. Dave Slow, man, that'd be kind of crazy. Oh, Dave Slow, yeah, that'd be nuts. There's a lot of female artists that are 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 uh, showing up. Like, what's that girl's name? Vava Le- Vava Vanilla or something. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty bit pretty Brea. Yep, I heard it. Yeah. And Rocky Bass still out there, obviously. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Cash Doll would be crazy. Yeah, one of them would be hard too. But I say like Cash Doll and Dash Love though. Nah. Man, did you know, do you know who Selena is? I heard of her. I think. That Mexican girl? Are you talking like old school 90s Selena? Yeah, the 90s girl, Selena from the 90s? No. Nah, you don't know who that Selena. is? Mm-mm. Say a song. She got a hit song. She died? Yeah, she's dead. I, bro, I just figured out. Yeah, bro, so I was watching her movie. There's a movie about her life, and I was like, watching all these shit's fire, man. I haven't heard about her in a minute. In the end of the movie, you figured out that her manager killed her. Yeah. Her, dad. Real, her dad? Her dad was a manager. No man, it was some. It was a woman. It was a woman. 
Yeah, so her her manager. She made movies too, though. Who Selena? Mm-hmm. I don't think she got that far. She was a young singer, man, Latina singer, gorgeous, beautiful, was drawing crowds. Anyway, at like the height of her success, like her manager, like was stealing money or some shit. And then when she got confronted by uh, Selena, she, her manager killed her. That shit's based on a true story. And I had just figured out by the end of this movie that Selena was dead. I was like, this whole time. But anyway, her manager gets out like this year. <laughs> Yeah, her manager yeah. gets out this year, man. That's fucked up. Yeah. She was played by J Lo too. Yeah, Jennifer right. Lopez played her. Young she was J-Lo. great. Yeah, young J Lo. That's why you gotta know who you close to. That's why I see why you say you got zero. Zero. That shit janky. Damn. Your manager taking you out. I mean, people have mm. conspiracies against like Suge Knight and shit like that, but goddamn, this shit was straight. To the face, like yeah, that's some wicked ass shit. Yeah, bro. Marvin Gaye got it from his dad. Marvin Gaye's dad Marvin, killed him. Yeah, Marvin yeah. Gaye's dad killed him. His, his dad had a history of violence and shit. And then uh, one day, some they had a disagreement, and his dad fucking came and shot him with the gun that Marvin gave him. Ah, uh, mm. damn. Yeah, very sad. I used to think my brother's friend wanted to kill me. When he used to be over in my crib, I used to think, man. You used to be high. I was high, I knew it. and I and I used to steal their weed. So I used to be like, "Damn, bro!" <laughs> so I used to like, I used to get, be, get you smoke this weed and be paranoid because I just had stole it from my friends, my brother's friends. So I was high, paranoid, thinking like he's gonna pull up on me, like, and he did. He came up. He's like, "Bro, we went to McDonald's." He's like, "Why is a quarter of the bag missing?" But he wasn't on that though. No, nah, he wasn't on yeah. that. But I felt that way. Paranoid, you had like justification to be nervous. Yeah, I mean, no, you don't kill somebody over weed, but I really did feel like I feel like he's gonna come back with some scissors and stab the shit out of me. (laughs) Could have been, right? They tweak it. He's not that type of person. He's not that kind of person. He's hallucinating all type of shit. What's wrong with (laughs) (laughs) him? I'm high. <laughs> I'm high as fuck. All right, we're back. We're talking about uh, projects and your music videos and how they're going to be changing. Mm-hmm. Basically, we're just going to stop being ghetto. We're going to just do a little more upgraded with the videos, like movie scenes, like just instead of being like a liquor store, standing at buildings and stuff, we're going to just start getting more creative with like the videos and stuff like that basically crossing over into more professionalism right yeah yeah what made you decide that elevation like i say every day i wake up i think about elevating so just clicked in one day like it's time for elevation you do it it, like i'm trying to think of a lot of some artists that really stayed straight hood forever and never crossed into mainstream, like as far as upgrading their production and everything like that. And how many people were successful doing that? That Ooh. didn't touch the mainstream type of aura or create stuff that's like, you know, more professional or whatnot. Right. Who stayed hood all the time? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to think of. I'm sure it is, I'm sure it's out there. But like made it, made it, made it. That'd be tough to say. Gotta elevate. Yeah. Yeah. Like the videos gotta look like nobody. I don't know nobody that stay hood. It made it. Like who the fuck? Yeah. Like we're like zero percent. Like never signed. Never did some professional ass shit. Yeah, it's a tough one for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You watch? You watch basketball? Nope. I'm a boxing type of person. What do you think of the fight? The Garcia fight. It was a good fight. It just kind of, I just ain't like how he just took that shot and just went down, though. I'm trying to figure out if it was a broken rib or what what happened. Like, what's... That's what you practice for. That's why I was kind of like, uh, mm, supposed to have been ready for that. Like, if you break your rib, you can keep going type shit? No. Nah, you think he broke his rib? I, what do you think happened? Mm-hmm. He knocked the wind out of him. I don't know. He couldn't take it. I don't What? Mm. He did look a little bit like... He got sl- back up. You know, they took pictures, so he couldn't have broke his rib. Yeah, he you're right. He just knocked the wind out of him. Like, 
That ref counted fast as hell, though, man. That shit was like one, two, three. I'm like, man, slow the fuck down. Give him a second. <laughs> like, you yeah. had some money on that? I was about to. So basically, I was chilling at my homegirl's house. And I kind of felt ghetto. I'm not going to lie. And I felt like I actually kind of embarrassed myself because I went to her crib to watch the fight. But, like, I bootlegged it off her laptop. And it had no sound. So, like, we didn't pay the $85, right? And then... Her, her roommate bought a boy Was bringing a boy over And I'm like I don't want to meet nobody So let's go into your room We went into her room to watch the bootleg fight And then dog who had came with the roommate Had purchased it on the big TV Right. And then I was like You know looking back and forth between the girl I'm with And I'm like oh they bought the fight And she looked at me and she said Yeah that's what kind of guy he is and I felt like shit. <laughs> so I felt you like, was watching it on his TV too? No, I was thinking about it. I was like, I don't want to meet nobody, so I'm not going to go out there. So we just stood on her laptop and just watched it with no sound. While dog was literally next door. He paid the $85, bro. I'm like, and I remember when she looked at me and she said that, I felt like less of a man at that point. You just She's know like, some ghetto shit. Like, I was like... That was just too ghetto, though. You were too ghetto on that one, though. Bro, 85 you said no dollars, sound. No sound. It was choppy. And and the worst part is I missed the knockout because, like, I looked back at her because she was putting her bra on. And when I looked back, the fight was over. I was like, God damn, I didn't even get to. <laughs> I came all the way over here. And now I'm going to get in trouble for saying this because I was supposed to be with a different girl watching the fight. See, everything's fucked up now, man. Yeah, look, you high, yeah. Yeah, everything's fucked up now. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, though, as far as my music career, though, it's just about to be a little more elevation to it. Just progressing with most stuff. Like, just not being too ghetto. I don't know. Just get more creative with it. What's making you think like that, though, bro? Because, you know, if something's working, why why do you got to, you know, what's making you think just, now? I don't know. I think it'll work 10 times more if I just put a little more creative to it. That's why I think like that. Yeah. Because I be having talks with a lot of people, like mutual close people around me, and we be adding stuff up, and a lot of stuff makes sense what we talk about, so I just feel like if I do get a little more creative and stop being just so not caring and just doing it how I do it, maybe, maybe it'll be more good for me. Right, you're putting like a conscious effort into your music now. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, let's pay attention to what we're actually doing. Here. Exactly. Instead of just doing, like, do you feel start like you, playing and stuff. Do you like feel that. like you maxed out in Detroit as far as obtaining the fan base that you can off of what you're doing right now, and that's why it's time to move on? Or do you feel like you still haven't maxed out all the potential from the music that you're making now? No, I just I still don't feel like I maxed out, but I feel like if I just start switching it up a little bit, I can attract like different people, and you know. Just more fans If I just switch it up And do stuff different yeah. Cause I'm good at What I do now Like you say I'm good at what I do But I just feel like If I get more creative I can attract different people Like different fans And stuff Yeah man It's a leap It's a leap It's a It's a gamble sometimes But it sounds like You know how to, how you're gonna do it Exactly mm-hmm. You have like So you said you have Rudy on your To talk to right Yeah And what's the conversations You guys have um, basically, like, just get my music out here. Like, say, say, like, I only be on Distro Kid and certain like little websites. He'd be schooling me on stuff. Like, you don't know about this. Like, you should get this. This gonna help you more. Like, he just a little motivating stuff with the music. Why? Like, yeah. like people that be mixing music, he give me refers over to his people. He know, like, stuff like that far as on the music side like you don't really be no street shit but it be like music shit so that's why i say i fuck with him because he know like this music shit i really want to do it so he give me his little pieces on certain shit i don't know about shit and now you're talking about the uh kind of trying some of the auto-tune stuff out right is it gonna be like a little bit more singing and melodic stuff going on yeah I'm switch it up like it ain't gonna be like all rap like i'm gonna i'm gonna fuck with it play with it yeah, this might be the pivoting time that people don't know about is that you have to jump even when you're succeeding mm-hmm. and do something different even when you're succeeding. Exactly. Because a lot yeah, of people wait. Sometimes I might not like it and I just throw it away, but I'm going to just start just putting it out there if I don't like it because certain people might like it. I don't know. This shit probably happens a lot. Mm-hmm. You make a song and you don't think nothing of it and then all of a sudden everybody's fucking with it. Throw it away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
that happens a lot more than people think in mainstream. You'll hear a lot of uh, major, major artists talk about songs they didn't think were going to be successful, and they end up being their biggest, biggest hits. Exactly. Like a band, uh, there's a band called Red Hot Chili Peppers. One of their songs is called Under the Bridge, and they didn't believe in it. They're What's like, their name? Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, okay. They uh, made a song, and they didn't really believe in it. They're like, we're not going to put this under, the, it's called Under the Bridge. It ended up being their like number one song. Yeah. And they did not even think anything of that song. It's so interesting, too, when you hear rappers say they have all these songs in the vaults. Like, bro, how do you know which one's the fucking one, bro? Like, how do you know? Exactly. Dude, mm, with me, I don't know. That's why I just go off. I just put it out there, and I just go off what other people say. But have you ever had an artist that told you, like, they just knew, like, what songs were going to be the ones? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the type, that's what you're on? Yeah, I really don't know. I just be, uh. I just be making music. <laughs> Yeah, whatever booms, booms. Mm-hmm. Like my songs that hit a million views, I I can never tell you. Like I knew they was gonna do that. Uh, I never knew. They just did it. But how do you choose to pick the visuals if you don't know? Like do you, so you hear the song, you see the response first from the song, and then you make the video for it. Yeah. So how what what how many what's the traction have to be like for you to know I'm shooting a video to the song? Mm, I don't know. I just off my vibe, off the energy of the song. Yeah. And then off people around me, they'd be like, yeah, this it, this it. Nah, I just go off of it. Yeah. You probably, that's like a good team around you to have then. Like, motherfuckers, if you keep the right around people around, I remember Scoob used to like bust out a big ass speaker and play like just random songs. And then he would pay attention to how many people are bobbing their head right now, how many people mm-hmm. are dancing to shit. And then once he find that song, he'd be like, all right, let's go. And somebody will pull out their video camera and start shooting the music video right fucking there. Exactly. And at first I was like, what the fuck? But now I get it. It's like, that's the most organic way to figure out. Mm-hmm. That's why I say I don't hang around a lot of people. I just hang around a few, <laughs> few genuine people. Like, they got to be genuine. So if they say something, I just go off what they say and a little bit off what I think. And then we just put it together. Because mm, I really don't listen to everybody's opinion. That's why I say. So if I listen to you, it got to be make it make sense to me. Yeah, for sure. People uh, usually are trying to help other people when they speak. Usually, if they're not speaking, it's like kind of withhold. I'm not gonna give this guy all the sauce type shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boom! Well, this has been fun, man. Is there anything we want to uh, talk about before we sign off? Mm, nope. Just a message to every upcoming artist, man. Just. Don't never let nobody tell you what you can't do. Shit, just stay sucker free and do you, shit. Mm, stay solid. This a message to everybody in the ghetto. One love. Yeah, yeah. Pre eight, shit. <laughs> My message to everybody is uh, try not to have multiple girlfriends at once. If shit does not work the way you planned it. I thought the shit would be sweet. It's not sweet. Uh. <laughs> you tell me it's not sweet. It's not sweet, man. I thought the shit was gonna be fun. It's not fun, man. It's just fucked up, man. Shit, yeah. future think it's sweet. Shit, <laughs> somebody gotta do it. Ah, uh, shit, man. It's been a fun ass talk. Got old baby boom. It's been in the building. Um, mm-hmm. appreciate you being a part of this. Uh, we're at Parallel Sound Studio. Hollow Visuals is shooting these productions. Yeah, appreciate you too, my guy. Appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate. I'm gonna have you back, man. I'm gonna have you back. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna make it. Be- when are you leaving again? Mm-hmm. Before August, around. August. I'm gonna have you on twice before August. Yeah, but around. August. And I got you on those too. Yeah, I got you. I'm gonna make sure I'm you're the first s- person here. Huh? One of the times I'm gonna be sober too, so I can focus up a little more. No, you're good, man. You're good. You're good. You're good. We're both very confused in this whole conversation. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it was good. Though. It was good, man. It was good. We're at Parallel Sound Studio. Hilo Visuals is shooting these productions. We're out. Peace.